Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max news. On this news we will talk about anything related with 3ds Max and we have a lot to cover this month one more time. Let's start with Arnold 7, that is here with a new version of Max 2A5 for 3ds Max. This is a major release with important API changes. There is the ability to render several scenes within the same process and shaders now supporting multiple outputs. On the new features we have the introduction of Open Image Denoiser Imager, the Intel AI accelerated denoiser that runs on CPU and, on my opinion, gives way better results than optics. There has been as well general improvements on the quality of the denoiser also on optics. As well, now we have LUTs mapping on ARB and Imager Color Cure for individual RGB controls on your images. Imager's refresh rate in progressive mode has been highly accelerated and improved, up to 48% faster and they use 20 times less memory. Visible lights now are transparent and OSL support has been improved working with UDIMS allowing for faster lookups. Arnold GPU gets a huge boost, now Polymages use way less RAM as you can see on this graph, up to 33% less memory consumption and also on volumes using compression for nano BDBs there is another 50-60% to reduction of GPU memory. GPU is also supporting now matte shaders, that is something that a lot of people were requesting. We have a lot of improvements on USD support and now it's quite mature in Arnold and there is more improvements that you can check on the change log together with multiple bug fixes. By the way, Arnold won an Engineering Emmy Award together with a very well-known 3 ds Max renderer, V-Ray. And as well we have news from V-Ray, that they present V-Ray 5.2, a new update available for 3 ds Max. This new update brings V-Ray Decal to project decals to any surface at any angle without having to take care of extra UV work or caring of anything, you simply project to all the objects in your scene. V-Ray gets even more improvements on post-process capabilities with now a sharp blur layer. Chaos Cosmos, the material library from V-Ray, received more than 200 new free and high quality materials that are ready to drag and drop to your scene. One that is very interesting for me is that now V-Ray Instancer allows you to pick any light as distribution object. You can use any particle system in 3ds Max to distribute lights. This can be particle flow, thinking particles, type flow, legacy particle systems, PRT loaders, or even fluids in 3ds Max. There are other improvements here and there. We have improvements on V-Ray Dirt. Now we have a sparse volumes and nano BDB, initial support for USD format, and all materials UI should be loading way faster in the material editor and a lot of other things that you can check on the changelog. Check the description for all the links to all this extra information. Cine Software updated all his lineup of software to version 1.24. The big feature now is that all plugins support Redshift Renderer and V-Ray Scene File Format. It's a popular format for Chaos Group V-Ray Scene Management. Now, Scatter, Disperse and Illumi plugins support Redshift renderers. The Illumi HDRI wizard has been updated to be able to add multiple file paths to HDRI libraries. Illumi supports a standard Redshift rendering as well in IPR mode. All the plugins support the latest V-Ray 5.2 update with interactive rendering, as well V-Ray scene file to share assets with any other application that runs V-Ray, including Chaos Cloud Rendering and Chaos Vantage. Cyclone sample parametric models are updated with Redshift material options as well. Think Kinetic has released Pull Down It 5. It's a new version of this fracturing system. Between the new features, we have a new physics solver that is twice as fast as before, a new ability to shatter along part of a curve and refine the number of cracks visually. Now it supports to add roughness to cut faces on broken areas for lighter meshes for rendering and multiple improvements on usability. Last month we had Thinking Particle 7, but in October they released two hotfixes that are quite important and fixes important problems with memory usage in simulations when you are caching with TPC uh, file formats and some problems in BDB manipulation. 
but this hotfix also adds improvements on the UI. Individual rollups can be reordered, and particle groups and dynamic sets menus can be minimized independently for way more flexibility. And now we have the option to change the color of any node and different shortcuts to toggle color changes and activate the activate multiple nodes all at once. Kinematic Lab released Bookmarks. It's a new plugin for animators that allow the user to create visual timeline bookmarks at a scene level or individual objects level. You can change colors, range, names, comments, link to, uh, links to a camera, and more. You can use this bookmark to navigate your animation, isolate time ranges, move a scale keyframes, layout, retime, etc. Bookmark for 3ds Max costs 25 euros, and I think it's a very useful tool if you are into layout or animation. We have three new scripts by RGB Tools, and let's start by the first one that is free, Layer Manager Extension. It's compatible with all 3ds Max versions, and as you can see, it's a lot of common tasks that you use day-to-day uh, -day to manage layers in a more flexible way. You can create layers directly, remove empty layers, show selected objects on layer, turn on or off selected object layers, change layers visibility states, and also you can change object properties directly, like display as box, display as transparent, change IDs or change wireframe colors, lock transforms, and all over multiple objects at once. The tool costs normally $5, but you will see that you have a coupon, and with this coupon it's totally free. I think it's a very useful tool. Next tool from RGB Tools is Road Marking Generator. Allows you to efficiently and automatically create 2D masks of roads marking in 3ds Max. It's ideal to save time on RGB projects. It comes with a lot of common decals for roads, and it's compatible with 3ds Max 2018 and higher and with most renderers. It costs $25. And finally, we have Ocean Wave Generator that works exactly in the same way from the road marking generator by placing manually decals of wave over a plane. You have both natural wave, breaking wave, or wave created by boats in different motions. There is also the possibility to create foam around the objects procedurally, so if you have a rock, you will have foam around the rock. Pretty cool, I think, if you have aerial shots of oceans or lakes, can be very, very useful to create this. Uh, for a static image, are, are quite interesting, and this costs $30. AMD has released Radeon Pro Viewport Imager Boost for 3ds Max, it's a long name, and this program will improve sharpness and clarity by rendering the viewport at a higher resolution than your monitor, so it will render the resolution at 4x your monitor resolution, and then scaling it back to the monitor actual resolution for better details. This technology is exclusive for AMD Radeon Pro graphic cards. And let's go with my favorite section that is 3ds Max, it's only for RGB. And my friends from Bipolar Studio, that is located in the sunny Los Angeles, showcase his latest video that is a reveal for the new Porsche or Porsche Taycan. A lot of electricity because the car is electric, and yeah, awesome lighting and environments on this video. On the description you will have the links to this video and also some behind the scenes showcasing the development. They use 3ds Max for modeling, layout, lighting and rendering. They render with V-Ray, they use a lot of forest pack, and they use as well Houdini for some of the effects that you can see here. Awesome uh, stuff, they work a lot with different high-end brands for cars. Check out his other videos that they do a great awesome job. And Ubisoft Studio released the latest Far Cry 6, his open, his open world video game, located on a tropical Caribbean island. Multiple artwork from different artists can be found on ArtStation, displaying from asset creations to a scene environment where 3ds Max was involved.
And let's go with more training material. We have Flip Normals, they release a complete 3ds Max course covering from the basics of modeling, UVs, rendering with Arnold, applying materials, texturing, and finally you will create this magic fluid. It's over 12 hours of videos, the instructor is Emiel Sliger, it's an it's a senior environment artist that did work on multiple video game companies and it's using the latest 3ds Max 2022 Arnold and it actually has a 25% discount and it costs $30. Quite interesting if you want an overview of 3ds Max from A to Z. Remember you will have all the links below in the description. Also, Arrimus keeps doing his Retopology Master Series, now he released the video number 10 in this month of October, and it's showcasing how to clean CAD data with the use of Retopology new 3ds Max tools with a minimum required manual Retopo in top for a perfect final result. I love his videos, it's displaying a lot of cool techniques on how to use Retopology, but also using different modifiers to, to clean up the models and create the best with the minimum clicks possible. And we have Typhlow City that I don't know how to call this because it's a tool, it's a tutorial, they are multiple 3ds Max files, it's a lot of things together. It's by Sergei Moflan, it's a great, it's a great technical artist that I have been following for a lot of time and it creates this total procedural setup and it's sharing multiple 3ds Max files shown in this trailer, plus four video tutorials explaining how to use and create the setup in English and also in Russian, with almost two hours of total duration. It's covering the procedural creation of the building, electric wires, roads, adding procedural details, and much more. It costs $20, and as you can see, if you need to create anything procedural or you need to learn some advanced Typhlo, because there is some advanced things here, I think it's totally worth it for this price, awesome uh, always, and I learn a lot from uh, Sergey. To end this month on my Patreon, I am uploading exclusive tutorials for all the people that are supporting me on Patreon, and I am focusing lately on covering Typhlo workflows for the project I did for Intel and Box Technologies, that is applying Typhlo for basic effects on an ArchBit project, and I, I created this video that it was more of a fast description of how I did the project. Now, for my Patreons, I am covering the step by step uh, that I am using uh, with Typhlo. So right now I have two videos of 15 minutes each covering each one a specific setup. If you want to learn more for Typhlo, joining me on Patreon is a way I will be covering materials next because it was one of the requests that one Patreon did to me. And yeah, I hope that you like this series of videos that are exclusive for all the people that is following me. And that's for the month of October. I think that we had a lot of news. If you make it until here and you like these videos, please give a like, leave a comment. I love comments. Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you are not subscribed. It helps a lot to spread the love of the channel. And thanks one more time to all my Patreons that make this possible. Again, if you want to have some exclusive content, uh, join me on Patreon. I will try to share multiple things with you month to month. Thank you a lot, guys. See you soon. Bye.